So good morning. Uh, welcome to the OpenStack Newton Summit. I hope you enjoy this event as much as we do. And I'm going to present our talk called Flat No More, Haraco Multi Tenancy and Project Exacting as Domains in OpenStack. Just to introduce us, I'm Henrique, he's Andre, he's Hayudo. We're all from the Federal University of Campina Grande and we work at the Distributed Systems Laboratory, which uh, you ha may have seen at the keynotes. So I'm, Hayud and I are software engineers at the university and Andre is a professor. So we'd like to go through this agenda at this talk. First of all, we introduce Keystone and then Hayud will talk about Heracle Multitenancy and Asset Quotas. And then I'll come back to talk about projects acting as domains and finally, Andre will summarize this and talk about the next steps of this work. Just a quick overview of Keystone, which is the OpenStack component responsible for identity management. Keystone deals with authorization, authentication, and audit. And among its features, there are support for multiple identity providers, which he enables throughout Federation. And Keystone also has support for very known tools at the market, very off backends and framework such as LDAP and OAuth. And the very big feature of Keystone we are interested in here on this talk is multi-tenancy, which we define multi-tenancy as a single instance of a software that runs on a server and serves multiple tenants. And here we define a tenant, a uh, gender term, as a group of users that share a common access with specific privileges to some parts of this software instance. And just to start here, just a, a little bit of history of how multi-tenancy has been evolving in OpenStack. At the beginning of it, we had from Austin to Cactus, a very simple multi-tenancy model. There was one user, one tenant, and at this moment, a user could not make an operation in a pro different tenant than the one it belongs to. So it was very simple at the beginning. And here, Nova was still the responsible component for authentication in OpenStack. Then at the Diablo release, we have introduced Keystone, which together with Finn, we have made the API v2.0, which in fact was the first Keystone API. And this beginning of Keystone still holds the same uh, model of one user, one tenant, which still was pretty simple. At this beginning, we still had a very simple role-based access control model, where, which were hard-coded to admin and member operations. So depending on the role your user had at the beginning, you could make an operation on each of those operation sets. And the biggest step on multi-tenancy in OpenStack was made at the Grizzly. So in Keystone, we have introduced the V3 API, which introduced the concept of domains, which are now the containers of projects and other OpenStack resources, such as users. And at this point, tenants are no longer called tenants and we call them projects. So, and these users are now part of the domain and not anymore of the tenant. And with, with these new introductions, here we have a more complex multi-tenancy model that we define it as one user, many projects that is possible due to our new role-based access control made via a policy file, which you can do an operation in a given project depending on the role you have on it. So that's a very, very big step for OpenStack multi-tenancy. And just a known issue that we had at this beginning is that the admin role in Keystone in OpenStack is global, which means that if you have the admin role on a given project, you are able to administrate the whole cloud. This was a very known issue at this point. And in Icehouse and June releases, we had the first efforts to eliminate this global admin role. So, and together with that, we had also great improvements on the domain usage with uh, introduction of features like domain-specific backends and uh, better domain policy enforcement. And finally, in Kilo, we had another big step in multi-tenancy, which was the introduction of hierarchical multi-tenancy, which I will explain right now. Hello, everyone. Um, what was our motivation to implement hierarchical multi-tenancy? The organization are naturally hierarchical. So in every company we have departments, sub-departments, sectors. So how to represent our hierarchy? On this sample we have a sample of our cloud in our university. 
So we have the UFCG cloud, and we have a couple of labs for LSD, SP Lab, and analytics, and so on. And inside LSD, we have the Fogbo project on our lab, and we have another project for big data. And more specifically, on OpenStack, we have a Keystone team, a Rank team, on Ask, and so on. So how can we represent that on inside OpenStack? We need to make our workaround in a flat way today, so we need to create a LSD domain, and inside this domain, we'll create a list of projects. For every project that we have on our lab, we need to create a list. So we'll have the LSD Fogbo, LSD Big Data, and so on. For OpenStack Keystone, Ironic, Monask. And we had a couple of problems with that uh, workaround. For example, how can we manage the access control for a lot of users when you have a big list of projects inside a domain? And how can we organize our resource? How can we find uh, some instance after that we, need, we have a big list of projects? So we implement hierarchy mode tenancy when we provide the ability to create sub-projects. So now we can create a project OpenStack inside our LSD domain, and inside this project, we can create sub-projects for Keystone, Monask, and so on. So now we can represent our departments and sub-departments in a hierarchy way. And we can do the same thing for the projects that we have in our lab, for Fogball, and so on. And to make this, you, you just need to add a parent option on the OpenStack call for create a project. So you can say, I will create a sub-project, and this project will for this parent using the parent name, or you can retrieve uh, the list of the parents using the parent option, and you can use the project show to retrieve the subtree and see the sub project for some project using the subtree option. So it's a basic operation related to hierarchy mode tennis. And how can we improve the access control now that we have a hierarchy? So imagine that Enrique here is our project manager for every open stack. Uh, project that we have in our lab. So if Henrique is the project manager, we need to repeat this grant for every project that we have on this subtree. So we we'll need to make the grant on the OpenStack and for Keystone, for Monasca, for every project that we have. And if someone creates a new project, we need to grant this role again. And if someday Henrique left our project, our lab, we need to delete all the grants for this user. And if we forgot to delete some grants, we will have a security issue when he could keep have access for our cloud, and this is a real problem. And another, in another way, uh, Andre is our professor, so they need to have access for all the projects in our lab, so we can grant the role, or we need to grant the, the role to Andre for every project that we have in our cloud. So this is a lot of entry for the same user. And our idea was implement inherited role assignment, sorry. And on inherited role assignment, we can grant the, the role for Henrique on the OpenStack level, and we will say, hey, this role will be inherited for every sub-project that we have on this subtree. So Henrique will have automatic access for Keystone, for Monasca, and if someone now creates a new project, Henrique will have automatically the access for, for this project. And you can do the same thing for Andre. So if you grant an inherited role in a domain level, this user will have access for every project on this, on this domain. So this is, we reduce the, the, the entries for, for these users and make easy the, the control for the operators. And to make this happen, we have a flag inherited. When, when you create an now assignment, you can say, I will create this assignment for this user on this project or domain, and this role will be inherited for every sub-project. And to retrieve these informations, we can use the inherited option on the role assignment list. When you can retrieve, you can see the inherited role assignments, and you can have the option to see only the effective assignments. And to delete the assignment inherited, now you have the option to use the inherited flag on the delete operation, and you can delete the inherited assignment. So imagine that you want to set up the hierarchy that we, that we use as our example. So first of all, you create the LST domain, 
And after that, you can create the OpenStack project inside this domain. And you can use now the parent option uh, for create Keystone and Monasca project. And you say that uh, you pass the parent option using the parent name, on this case, OpenStack. And after that, you can create the user Enric, and we will grant the project manager role to Enric, and this role will be inherited for every project inside this subtree. And how can we handle with the resource? Now that we know how to control better the access control, how can we handle with uh, to enforce quota for these users? Uh, in the current quota implementation, um, the existing driver handle with Quota in, uh, when projects are independent. So a quota for a sub-project can exceed the parent quota, and their project manager cannot control the sub-project quotas. So this is a problem. And the other thing is that other services do not support domains. So we can't, uh, there are no quotas for domains. And if a project manager wants to handle with their own users, in other words, we need to create a domain for this project manager they cannot control their quarters since we don't have quarters for domains. So with the current implementation, we can have the situation when the sub-project Keystone can have more quarters than their parent. And on this case, every project are independent. There are no relation between us. And we don't have quarter on the domain level, so we can set the quarter for LSD on our cloud. What's the idea? The idea is create a new driver to represent nested quota and works with nested projects that will allocate part of the parent's quota to the sub projects. And the, now the project manager will share his quotas. In other words, they are split their resource among the sub tree. And a quota for a sub tree will always be lower than their parent. So the previous behaviors that we had when Keystone have more quota than their parent now we will not be allowed anymore. So Keystone needs have lower quota than their parent, and we are allocating the quota for the OpenStack level to the sub-projects. So the OpenStack quota will be split for the sub-projects. And now Enric will explain about the visibility. So. As Hyde said, we're not able to set quota for the domain, which in, this, in our case, we cannot set the quota of the LSD domain. And that raises some issues regarding the, what's the visibility of the cloud admin should have in resources it creates. And the first scenario of it is where the cloud admin delegates the control for the project manager, which may be me in our example. So here, the cloud admin creates a domain, which is in this situation a black box, and then he won't be access to the domain itself because uh, he delegates all responsibilities to the project manager. So in this example here, the project manager is responsible for creating users, projects, hierarchies, and finally to set the quotas inside these projects. So the bad side of it is that although the cloud admin delegates the full responsibility to the project manager, uh, he cannot control how the project manager distributes those resources. So here in our example, the project manager creates two root projects that are independent on each other, and then he can set a huge quota for each of each sub-projects of that. So this is not a scenario we want. So uh, in the next case here, we have the cloud admin controlling all of those resources inside the delegated domain. However, this domain will not, will not be a uh, black box anymore here, so the cloud admin is able to see all resources uh, that are in the domain. So here, uh, although the domain, uh, the cloud admin is able to have a good control of those resources, here uh, the project manager will have be very dependent on him since he'll need to contact the cloud admin on every single operation such as the project creation and quota setting uh, that the project manager may need. And uh, together with that, the domain, the cloud admin is very strong here. So this is not a scalable approach, which in a, especially in a public cloud environment where, where there are lots of clients, lots of domains, uh, the cloud admin may have an unfeasible task. And we had a, an approach to solve those problems. So 
just the statement uh, of this problem is, how can we give project manager the control of their resources without giving them all resources of the cloud? And to solve this small problem here, we have implemented projects acting as domains, which, as Hayot said before, this is our representation of our cloud. Uh, at, the b at the top here, we have the LST domain, which has two root projects called OpenStack, called Fogbo, which have their own children. And with our new implementation on projects acting as domains, we change that here now. LSD is a project that acts as a domain at the top of those hierarchies, and that also have with analytics here. And the OpenStack that was once the root here is not anymore, so it will have LSD as the parent. So just better explain here what has exactly changed is that LSD is now a project, but also a domain. And this new kind of project is re internally represented with the is domain flag. In this case, it's set to true. And uh, this LSD domain slash project is still the container of users and other projects. And the big advantage, the big win of the situation is that the cloud admin is able to set the quota for LSD, which is the project. So uh, other services such as Nova and Cinder cannot handle with domains currently. It looks like it's not something they want to do. So uh, now they only need to deal uh, on the nested quarter example with a project, which is the root is LSD. So that change will be totally transparent for other services and will be able to set the quota for a domain. And uh, with that, the project manager will be able to distribute this domain quota across history and we we'll create sub-projects and uh, split this quarter for the sub-projects. And just here, I want to show how can we can create a hierarchy, as Harold explained, in the projects acting as domains approach. First of all, we just use the project's API, which the only difference here is that we need to pass these domain flags set to true, which will generate a new project called LSD, as we stated here, which will have these domain flags set to true, and this new kind of project acts as a domain, have no parent ID and no domain ID, as it's indeed the domain. And an altern alternative step to do this operation here is using the domain API, which you can do a simple post to the domain, or either you can also use the CLI, creating a simple domain here. And these operations in projects acting as domains will create the same entity as you have just created, which is the project with no parent and no domain ID. For a while, here we have the domain and projects API, projects acting as domains mirrored. So if you get, do a get project on the domain API, we will have this project and this also work for the update and delete operations. So uh, this is what we are keeping for a while, although we recommend that in a short future, you start using only the project API because due to a better user experience and there are also some thoughts of the Keystone team that we intend to deprecate the domain API, so we strongly recommend you that you focus on the project API. And just going on with our structure here, we, have create, we are creating here the OpenStack project, which is now a children of the project that acts as a domain LSD, and we have here the flag is domain set to false, which is optional since this domain is false by default, and we, have, we pass here the parent ID, which is the LSD's ID. So here, this new project is created with LSD as a parent, and LSD is also the domain of it. So we can also do this operation at the old-fashioned COI. Here we can have a project create the OpenStack. And just a reminder is that the Keystone client in OpenStack COI does not, do not support this domain flag attribute yet, so that's something we intend to do at Newton release. And then we can create this, that's all, that's all have changed which was, the pro this project before was a root project, but now it has a parent, which is the new project that acts as a domain. And finally here, just creating another child project here, we created the Keystone project, which is a child of OpenStack, and is also inside the domain LSD by just passing the parent ID. Uh, it's good to note that at this point here, the domain ID is optional and is even redundant as we can impl always imply the domain ID from the parent, so that's a more comfortable way for dealing with hierarchies, for dealing with trees at a whole. 
and finally, uh, can also create using the CLI, as I said before. So now, Andre will give the summary and the next steps for this work. Thank you, Enrique. So, your Akamut tenancy is something that helps you manage your cloud because it helps you to reflect your structure also in the cloud. And it's basically made possible because of a combination of several features. The first one being the ability to create projects that have relationship with other projects, like parent-child relationships. And using that relationships, you can build your keys. And then the next point is that you want to assign roles to users using that YAR key. And with that, you cannot, you, you can directly assign roles to users that consider the YAR key, and you don't need to pick individual project user assignments, as Haib said. So if you have a huge cloud, you don't need to, to assign the role in all the projects. You can just use inherited roles to assign the roles in the subtree. Um, the next important feature is the uh, managing the resources using this hierarchy, and that's also a very important feature. And the final one is the ability to delegate the control of a subtree. So you want not only that the project manager can handle the resources and the subprojects, but also the users. And this is what we call the reseller use case is the ability that subproject will also manage the users. For example, in our hierarchy here, now we could have that the Fogbo is a project acting as a domain, but even could have a different backend, a different user backend. And this is not yet possible for the subproject. It's something that is coming up next. Um, and there is where Feedback, use cases, and contributions are always welcome, okay? And this reseller use case also enables you to completely delegate the control of a part of your, of your project, right? So if you can manage your users and you cannot look inside, then you could even resell this part of the cloud. There will be some discussions about the, the reseller use case in this session here. So the new features in Keystone, and it will be in the Hilton Saloon E on Wednesday. Okay, and some of the topics will be the reseller use case and the project three operations. The next thing that is also very important and there is still work to do is the, the nested quota. So you can do a lot with Yaraco projects today, especially regarding the organization of the, the resources in the hierarchy. But the quota is also very important, and it's working already in Cinder, and it's under review in Nova. But there is also some things that could be done to easy the implementation of this uh, in other projects, so that the projects could use a single implementation instead of each one implementing their, uh, their own version. And the goal is then to build a quota library for all the services. There will be a, a cross-project workshop around that, and it will be tomorrow at the end of the afternoon, also in the Houston Salon D. So as this is, uh, there is a lot of work, there is some work to do here. You are welcome to contribute with the code, to share use case, to review code. There is even a channel for this specific topic. Um, CERN and Yahoo are the leading um, partners on this one. Um, finally, there are some efforts on the, the user experience front. So the expected is that when you create a project, you have something like this parent project Dropbox, where you could um, select the place, the new project in your project hierarchy. And then it would also be expected that you could select the project using hierarchies from the, the drop down on the top of your horizon, horizon screen. These are work in progress things. There's a lot of activity going on in the Envision again feedback and contributions are welcome. Um, so finally, um, this work, although Enrique and Hayudo and other guys from the lab made a huge work to make this happen, of course, this would not be possible without the, the heavy collaboration with the Keystone community and 
with the, the companies they belong to, so Red Hat, Hewlett Packard, Yahoo, IBM, and CERN uh, have collaborated a lot with us in this in these features we discussed it today. And then I would like to thank you all for your time and thank also to the members of the team that could not come to Austin and that left the team recently. <laughs> so if you have questions, you would be very welcome. So uh, I'm Adam Young. Keystone and these guys have been absolutely uh, fantastic. I guess I should say Adam Young from Red Hat works on Keystone, um, but I, you know. Um, so uh, there's a couple uh, details that are probably worth pulling out here. Um, on the, uh, the delegation front, the ability to uh, do reseller where you say you can manage your own thing, there's a long outstanding bug um, where admin somewhere is ma admin everywhere and we'll be just talking more about how we're tackling that, um, as well as some of the other roles stuff in a talk. It's me and Henry Nash from IBM uh, tomorrow around four something-ish. I should have this more as now, but I'll be there, so hopefully you'll too. Um, but that very much ties in what they're doing here, and actually we'll tie in with the other role work that we're doing with the, uh, the HMT and stuff along these lines. Um, but Yeah, thank you. Question. Yeah, so uh, when we have uh, integration with, uh, let's say, a third party uh, identity manager, in many cases we have centralized identity managers and we have the back end uh, integration to that. How, how do you see this multi level hierarchy uh, and uh, the access control in that hierarchy for user identities, they don't live within Keystone uh, mm -hmm. because those user identities are coming from some central item system. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically the, the back end of the users will stay the same that is, has been handed today. So the ability to put these identity management systems in the sub-project will be possible soon. Today this is only possible for the root project, which is the same way that you do the domains. I, 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 yeah. It's a uh, yeah, we, anyway, we yeah, can just jump in. We can have the these different kind of backends using domain specific backend. So we can have a, a backend for domain. What we want to do as a next step is have uh, one backend for level for sub project that act as a domain. We are just extending this domain-specific backend for the subtree. So today we have this ability, but for domains. So if I have more than one hierarchy in a domain, I just I can just have one oh, backend. Sorry if I misunderstood the question. No, I think you kind of answered that. It's it's basically what I'm hearing is that you have to configure one backend per level of the hierarchy. Per, per project, yes. Per, per project, yes. So I'm going to go with the assumption that what we're seeing is that they're not actually wanting to expose these as LDAP. Is that correct? It's more likely through federation protocols? Yes, okay. yes. So, Sam Sam yeah. Yeah. so with, with federation, what you do is you map a user from whatever remote ID, the, the, the protocol, and the, the big two protocols really well su supported right now, SAML and, and OpenID Connect. Um, to a user, and there's other talks that we talk about shadow users and, and advances in that that HM, uh, HMT will be able to make use of. Um, so the idea of federation as a part of Keystone is really becoming a first class citizen, and so that's what you would use there. What you get from the identity back end, which is what you get from federation, is the users and the group abstraction. So if you can represent it as a group, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like an LDAP group, it just has to be something that we can map as a group once it hits. Keystone has to be in that assertion. Um, then you can use that to do assignments within whatever domain. It can, it, it do, just because a user is in one domain, say, say Red Hat had a domain in their cloud there, um, but they had a project under the LSD domain that they wanted me to have access to, they could assign my user a role in that one. So assigning a role across a domain is different from what domain owns the user database. Okay, so that stuff is all very well supported in Keystone. Yeah. 
Okay, so it puts some requirement to put some mapping of the group yes. on yeah. the central identity exactly. manager. Okay. And that is not a light touch. Doing, adding an additional identity provider, adding additional protocol, um, because it's done at the Apache layer, it's something that, that requires a little bit of, it, it's not something you could just do using a Keystone API, but it can be done. Okay, thank you. Um, hi there, I have a quick question. It hi. seems like once you add the ability to assign hierarchy to projects, and given that users have visibility at the project level, the idea of domains kind of, kind of goes away because a domain is really a top level project. I, is that anything that's envisioned in the future or do we need to yep. keep the domain concept? That's related to what you said, so can you take this one? I don't see it like that. I see that the concept of domain will be there, I guess, forever, but will be mapped into projects. So this project will keep doing the same work as the domain does. If that it's a answers your questions. Space, right? Oh, I understand, but now that you have the hierarchy, it almost seems like you could just have one kind of container and it can, it doesn't necessarily have to be called something else. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to get lost there. You're 100% correct. Um, when we first, somebody first floated the idea of domains, I said, now why don't we just make projects hierarchical? And I lost. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna win in the long term, but when I was have a lot of pain. I think you're right. Um, if we continue with domain-specific backends, which we meet, need for LDAP, we'll probably have the concept of domains around for that, because it is a top-level bucket for users as managed by Keystone. With Federation, you need that less, especially with shadow users. And with Federation, we tend to map all users into a single domain, just a Federation domain. Um, if you don't do that carefully, then you can get them to step on each other. So that's why the whole shadow users, I keep bringing that up again. Um, and in that case, then we'll have one big bucket for federation. But even then, you might decide that you want to um, divide things up. So domains will be a namespace for users mostly. And on the project side, you're right, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be there, which is why projects as domains or domains as projects is so powerful. For you. OK, thank you. <laughs> so you've restricted the, uh, the focus on Keystone ish objects like our backend quotas. And that's cool, I get that. Mm -hmm. But we have other things that we think of sharing. For example, security groups. I would yeah. really like to be able to share security groups. Have you thought about whether the structure you've created here, I understand mm -hmm. that, that from a code point of view, there's a whole lot of mess to make that happen. But structurally, projects and subprojects, do you see them expanding out potentially into other uh, entities and resources. I, I think that first of all, we, we, these projects keep isolated to the other servers. So the hierarchy C that we are showing here is only C by Keystone. And now on seeing they're using the nested quota, but for the other services, they are isolated. And we are just, uh, we start doing this, but we are a little fair to create a Pandora box on everything will be nested in hierarchy. So it's something that I, I agree. We, we are looking for new use case, but we need to be a little aware to don't open a, a, a Pandora box for a nested That thing. applies for many things. So yeah. you want the, the images to be accessible from Network. student projects yeah. and all these things. So this is something that should be evolved with careful so yeah. that you don't uh, so, yeah. just as an example, domains there since Grizzly, and other services do not know yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> imagine Harak multi-tenancy, which there since Kilo, and we're starting now to implement it code. So, that might be a good next step, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I just have a question regarding this role management. Uh, so, first question is just want to make sure my understanding is correct about the role management mm -hmm. and how we are going to assign permission to the role. So it looks like we have API allows us to dynamically create a role. But in the meantime, the role permission for each role is managed by this policy file, which means I have to manually change the policy file to give the role permission to a role. Mm -hmm. So if my understanding is correctly, so my second question is, for me, this is halfway down for the low-based API. Yes. What's our plan to address this issue? <laughs> <laughs> come come yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. So if you come to my talk, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will continue this conversation. Um, it's, uh, it's a tough problem. We, we look into doing a dynamic policy distribution and um, you kind of this, this, this very problem that we just discussed about the, the lag between a feature going into Keystone and the other products being able to consume it kind of made that untenable. Um, and the other response that we got is that policy being um, perceived as a configuration type thing, they want to have the configuration management tools manage it. Mm -hmm. So um, I personally have been focusing on um, Triple O's approach to this and um, talking with the Heat and the Puppet, the, the Keystone Puppet and other Puppet module team um, to come up with a way that we can do exactly that. Distribute policy in a lightweight way across. And if we can solve it for triple O, I'm pretty sure that we can say, this is what it looks like with this content management system. Here's what the deltas are going to be. We know that, you know, we're doing it with Puppet here. We can do it with, with Ansible or whatever. But it's really, it's the fact that it's the cloud management integrated um, mechanism. That it's, it's not Keystone's ability to affect change on these files that really drives that conversation. Thanks. With the sub-projects and like being able to like uh, have project managers assign quotas and stuff, if I am a user who gets like added to multiple groups, do I have to source my like Nova credentials for each different group for those quota assignments, or do I just get them all for me? Sorry, could you repeat? Uh, so, like, if I'm a member of a sub, like three sub-projects, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is the quota that the project manager assigns to me just mine, or is it? Like, um, do I have to source three different Novars? Uh, there's two kinds of quota. There's a quota for user and quota for project. But what we are handling here is quota for project. It's more the quota for a project will be shared for uh, other users inside a, a project. Uh, I have uh, just uh, questions uh, to clarify for myself. So uh, the uh, hierarchical multi-tenancy is not upstream, right? Yeah, no. it is. It is it's upstream. Uh, it it is upstream kilo. in Mitaka. Yeah? Kilo. Kilo. Yeah. So uh, there are a few changes, but yeah, the, the yeah. basic support is there since. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the things that you describe. Is it, it is available in Kilo already. Yes. So yeah. the, the CLI, the, the CLI examples that Hayudu and Enrique show yeah. are OpenStack CLI clients. So you can go there, OpenStack project, yeah. and create a hierarchy today. It, it's not available on Horizon yet. Yeah. But yeah. That's, that's, that's our, those are next steps. Uh, so uh, using multi tenancy uh, makes uh, Horizon useless. No, no, it's no, just no. that you, you, <laughs> cannot, you cannot see the You ERP cannot see the hierarchy yeah. way. Yeah. So just uh, still I can log in to my project? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah the same thing. You just cannot uh, assign roles inherited and you cannot create sub-projects in Horizon. So yeah. I actually, there's something I want to address, I just that. Okay. <laughs> Last time. Okay, um, so that's a tricky question here. Um, if, if you think that through, it's like, well, how do I find, or if I have two projects that are named the same thing because they're in different hierarchies, how do I know which is which? And there are a lot of issues with naming. There is one config option in Keystone, which I would recommend people thinking about doing HMT uh, uh, set, which is that it's, it's strict checking on the name of a project. And that will allow you to build um, that project as a suburb. Um, I don't know that it will actually do anything today, but it means that as you move forward, you're not going to be putting um, non earl safe characters into your project names. And thus, um, when we get to the point where we want to be able to say, you know, lsd.keystone versus redhat.keystone or slash to define the two different projects, we'll have a way of being able to build that, that, u that user interface on out. So definitely um, make sure you set that. It will kick back any projects that you, ex if you try to do a create project, where that project name has a non earl safe character in it, um, it will, it will uh, the, the create will fail. So I would recommend that you do that. Uh, and the last question, uh, <laughs> is there any easy integration with Sealometer? Uh, I, I mean like uh, how can I, uh, for example, uh, ask Sealometer uh, about, uh, well, uh, I think that you can use the case that we show when you can retrieve the subtree or see the parts and I can, for example, see all the subtree that I have I, and I have a list of these projects and I can use on Telometer to see how the hierarchy are using um, these resources. I think there is a simple integration 
yeah, with the API that we already provided. Yeah. Yeah, Silometer does not know Harak multi tenants yet, so you cannot say, uh, give me the amount of CPUs used by this hierarchy. So that's not something we have so far. You, yeah. you can do it by some simple hacks, but Silometer yeah. does not natively, natively support it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a quick question about uh, uh, project admin privileges. So now I notice that in Kilo, for, for example, if you are an uh, admin user from project one, you can always see the resources in other projects. Is that some problem we are trying to solve in Keystone side, or it has to be done yeah. by other projects like Nova, Sinus? Yeah. It requires an HTTP box. Yeah. Oh, maybe you want to. <laughs> 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 but yes, it's it, being handled here. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's already been handled in Metaka or it will? No, it's been um, yeah. increasingly, oh. increasingly oh. handled. Oh. So there okay. are some, some steps to. Okay. Is there any place I can track those uh, progresses? Yes, there are. There are. <laughs> Just go to the Adam? Discuss about it. We found that you're going to hear you explain everything. <laughs> he probably has a tall credential. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you everyone.